Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Uh, we had the White House pedal later on in the black waiting area completely separate. Even down to the water fountain and the seats on the bus, they occupied the same space, but there was a clear boundary between the races. Those things have truly been a race from our culture. Those things are gone and hopefully forgotten. But all the work, all the protests, and all the lives that were lost should never ever be forgotten. Uh, as he said, uh, my dad said earlier, I go to a Saturday school. It's called ACE, Aviation Career Enrichment. We learn about the techniques and the science of flight. And I can't help but recognize the history of aviation, starting with the Tuskegee Airmen. Mm -hmm. Now, before the movie Red Tails came out last month, there were not many people, especially around my age, they even knew who they were. Mm -hmm. But with the movie's influence, using action and young black stars, to help tell the historic accounts of black Air Force heroes. We have a fresh lesson of what they did, not only for the black community, but for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. Now most of the original Tuskegee Airmen are gone. It's probably about five left. And we may not know every single airman by name, but we remember what they did as a group. Now out of all the five pilot escorts in World War II, they were the only ones not to lose a single bomb, the all black fighter group. Their story should never be forgotten. Mm -hmm. They made the way for many African Americans and African Americans in aviation, including myself. But there are some bigger names. Colonel Guy Bluford, mm -hmm. he was the first black man in space. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mae Jemison, the first black woman in space. Mm -hmm. They're not gone, but the very first black man who was trained as an astronaut is gone. Mm -hmm. He was Robert Lawrence Jr. He was training back in 1967. Lawrence died in a flight accident and never made it into space. His groundbreaking contributions, however, should never be forgotten. And Dr. Ronald E. McNair was a black man who died on the Challenger explosion in 86. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's gone, but many schools are named after him, so we never forget his name. Mm -hmm. Let's go even deeper than that. I can almost guarantee you hardly anyone knows who Carter G. Woodson is. He's the reason we have Black History Month. He's the, he's the reason we're here today. Dr. Woodson was the second black man to graduate from Harvard with a PhD, the first being W.E.B. Du Bois. He earned his doctorate in history in 1912 and 14 years later created Negro History. It was an effort to educate the world about the value of black people and to educate black America about self-worth and the many accomplishments of black people who look just like us. Negro History Week became a Black History Month because we have so much of an impact and so many stories to share with the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's passed on, and we remember him. Well, rather his legacy, Black History Month. Yeah. Uh, to my earlier point, hopefully we're getting closer to a world where black people, as a race, are never seen as dumb, not intelligent, not able to contribute to a greater good. Mm -hmm. Well, you may not know who Carter G. Wilson is, you know what he put in place to help observe contributions from black people all over the world. We remember and we honor what he did for us. Another pioneer in positivity for black people was businessman and publisher John H. Johnson. In 1942, he founded Johnson Publishing Company and a black version of the Reader's Digest called the Negro Digest. So he did this to promote positive images in black America. From that success, in 1945, he went on to create Ebony, which was patterned after Life magazine and Jet magazine, and then in 1957, Fashion Fair Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. Ebony even grew in South Africa in 1995. Mr. Johnson is gone, but his legacies continue through his daughter, Linda Johnson Rice. Mm -hmm. Johnson Publishing also partnered with some other companies to help him grow, which leads me to my next point. Mm -hmm. uh, as all may know, Don Cornelius, the creator of Soul Train, recently passed. Mm -hmm. My parents said that they will always hear sponsorships from Ultra Sheen, Afro Sheen, and Ultra Sheen <laughs> uh, These were Johnson products, and for the years they were sponsored. For years, they were sponsors of the weekly dance program. Obviously, Soul Train is gone along with its creator, Don Cornelius. But the springboard for many black artists and the culture it created won't be forgotten. The man who was considered as the father of gospel music, Thomas Andrew Dorsey, he was born in Villa Rica, Georgia. He blended the words of spirituals with the beats and rhythms of blues and jazz to create what we call gospel. 
One of his most famous songs was Take My Hand, Precious Lord. Mahalia Jackson and Elvis Presley were among the artists who performed that, song, that classic. Professor Dorsey is gone, but his, his gospel is here to stay. Uh, I also want to say that there was a performance by Whitney Houston of the song. Uh, she died two weeks ago. She was a hit maker, and when Whitney was the first artist ever to have seven consecutive singles hit the number one on the charts. She and many other outstanding black artists have made major contributions to music and culture, and they're now gone. But in her case, gone a little too soon. But through the music, they're never forgotten. I now want to specifically speak to my generation and the younger generation. No one remembers you for what you say you're gonna do. You have to do it. History gives you credit for what you've done. It is a time for us to build on the foundation that has been laid before us. There's, there are many people in graveyards who are gone and forgotten because they chose not to offer what their, ta their talents and gifts to the world. My father often, often tells me there are many great ideas that are buried in graveyards. It's a time for us to do whatever we can to improve the lives and lives of our children. I want to read uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, and it states that there's a time and place for everything. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, <coughs> a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Also, there's a time to forget, and there's a time to remember. We must remember our past to guide us through our present and lead us to our future. <laughs> what will you and I be remembered for? We will be remembered for what will we be remembered for posting inappropriate pictures or comments on Facebook or Twitter? Or what will we be known for creating the next big social network? Will we be the next Mark Zuckerberg? For those of you who don't know who that is, he's the youngest billionaire in the world. He has seventeen point five billion dollars. And that sounds good to me. I don't know about y'all, but it sounds like <laughs> But the time for us to do great things is right now. This is our time to become unforgettable by doing things that will never, ever be forgotten. This is my third appearance at Allen Chapel, and I would like to thank you all for not forgetting me. And I would also allow me to be a part of today's program. Thank you all.